Okay, this is Damian McNamara, Global Medical News Network, and with me is Dr. Richard Zackheim, who's director of the Adult Congenital Heart Clinic at Miami Children's Hospital here in South Florida. One of the themes you addressed in this talk here, you talked about transitioning children with congenital heart disease to adult provider care, and there are a lot of challenges, there's some strategies you talked about. But one of the issues that stood out for me is that these, a fair percentage of these patients tend to fall out of the medical system in between being seen by pediatricians and adult care. Can you address uh, what some of those main reasons are that they sort of fall out of the system? Well, part of it is um, it's only been lately that this issue of uh, transitioning has become, we've become more aware of it. Uh, and um, transition, as I mentioned, is a process and you have to start preparing the family and the child and then when the child's older and an adolescent has to become a responsible individual, and this doesn't happen uh, overnight. And if you really uh, want these adolescents to do follow up when they become independent adults, they have to sort of uh, sign up for the program. Uh, we hope to avoid, I didn't mention this, but like, you know, we don't want to do, there's a different, transitioning is a process, transfer is an event. Why are some uh, adult cardiologists resistant to take on these patients? Well, it's not that they're bad uh, people, it's just that they realized in their training they weren't train, trained to take care of uh, congenital heart problems. Um, mainly the adult cardiology is uh, dealing with acquired uh, problems that you get from old age. And 20 years ago, most of these uh, children with adult congenital problems and other congenital problems didn't survive to be adults. Uh, so that uh, nobody worried about training adult cardiologists to, to do that. Uh, and, um, you know, they feel that they just don't have the expertise to do it. And these are complicated issues. Plus, there are other issues that I mentioned which they do take a lot of time. And then we have the insurance issues uh, in this country too, which drive me crazy every day. And don't get me started on that. Well, well I can ask you about that next. Yeah, I was I'll be glad to, to talk about it. You know, yeah. I, you know, I personally think that you know the medical uh, situation in the United States is a disgrace. And every 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 day I see in my office children and young adults who aren't getting proper care or don't come back for care because of lack of insurance issues. And this, uh, you know, this new health uh, program that they keep debating uh, is critical for uh, children with chronic health problems because they all have uh, pre-existing conditions. And you've been hearing that covering people with pre-existing conditions. The crazy part about it is some of our heart cases and a lot of the other cases, the government has already spent uh, a half a million or a million dollars on the individual. Then they get to be 21 years old. You're on your own. Because their and Medicaid stops. Because the Medicaid stops or something like that, and you lose the whole investment. It's, it's just nuts. Now, I've heard some propose that it might be a good idea to do a registry of these kids so you can kind of track them as they transition. Do you yes, think that's, that's it? absolutely, and we're doing that. And, and, and uh, we've developed, you mean, in the adult congenital heart community, they're uh, developing a database that we can use it throughout the country in all the places where they take care of adults with congenital heart disease. So we have common codes so we can keep more accurate statistics. So that's, that's forthcoming. Yeah, it's very, it, we, we, yes, absolutely. This has been Damian McMurray, Global Medical News Network.